Welcome back to Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul. We are testing our new dash cam from the car. We just had a date night over at Olive Garden. Had a wonderful dinner. It was very, very good. We needed to get away. It's been kind of rough at home. Family situation. Yeah, just a quick little head, you know, information. You all know and love Buddy Will. Well, unfortunately, um, Will started to have seizures. He had his first seizure in um, the first week of September, and he had another seizure the first week of October. And as you guys know, Will's autistic, scared the living crap out of me. The and here's the weird thing. The very first seizure he ever had, Will and I just happened to be in the car. He was sitting next to me and we were headed to my brother's house because I was dog sitting and Will had a seizure. So I had to get my husband out of the house and we had to call the ambulance and he went to the hospital. They didn't keep him. They ran some tests. They sent him home. Ran the CT scan. CT, CT scan came up normal. Blood work. They even tested for drugs. Yeah. Didn't funny. find anything. Nothing. So we were told. Oh, and then we made an appointment with the neuro, with the neurologist, and they informed us they don't know why he had a seizure. He may never have a seizure again. And that was it. But they schedule an EEG. They told us, I, yeah. want, I want an EEG. But we learned later that that test is useless yep. unless you're having a seizure. Worthless. So we he spent, uh, what was it, a half an hour to an hour in that test for nothing. But the same day we came home, he, he was upstairs helping his mother and yeah. his brother clean the room. This was seizure room. number two, the one in early that October. That we know of. Yeah. We, we assumed. We'll talk about that afterwards, but... Um, the thing that happened with the second seizure, the first one, like I said, he was sitting, which, you know, that better. The second one, the poor guy was actually walking towards me, started seizing, and fell right into me. And I happened to be sitting in a recliner. So he actually fell into me, and Will's a big guy, and I was scared to death because I was afraid he's going to suffocate because he fell head first into me. And I was not strong enough to lift him. So I started yelling to Samuel. Samuel started yelling to Paul to try to come up and help us so we could try to move him. We had to call the ambulance again. And um, that's Will's bedroom was upstairs. And the uh, ambulance people, the you know medical techs, told us that we really should not have have him upstairs because it's just, it's too hard. They had a heck of a time trying to get him out of his room and even down the steps. It was freaking Will out. So, then what were you going to talk about? About, um... <laughs> Again, we, we had the tests. I mean, it's hard to take a six foot, 300 pound kid down a, uh, a long flight of stairs and he's a, he's not quite there the symptoms after a seizure he has, is sounds like a drunken sailor i mean just slurring words not sure what his surroundings are just uh you know he doesn't want to move gives everybody a hard time well yeah the thing is you know will is a super happy guy and when he started to come out of his seizure it was freaking him out and um so then he started fighting because he didn't understand why these men were like manhandling him which i can understand that's got to be frightening for him so um yeah paul went in the ambulance with both times and um it just worked out. It just so happened. Oh, what we wanted to tell you, what Paul started to say, was 
the first seizure Will had, when we tried, when I tried talking to him to see if he could remember it, he kept referring to the seizure as a nightmare. And a couple days prior to his second seizure, Will had been complaining of having nightmares and complaining of being very, very tired. In fact, he'd go to his day program on Wednesday. He said he was very, very tired and he wanted to sleep in. So we said, that was fine. You don't have to go. So wouldn't you know it? The very next day was when he had his seizure. So we took him, it just worked out that we just happened to have uh, another appointment with the neurologist to go over the EEG results, which of course came up as nothing. It's worthless. So now, now, now after seeing with the neurologist, and he's like, okay, we have no choice. Got to put him on a medication, which he did. And he's on his second day was today for taking that med. But then he's also prescribed a nasal a spray. Nasal spray when it, he see why he's currently having the seizure or slightly coming out of the seizure to spray this up his nose. Up his nose. It's it's a, a some kind of narcotic um, substance in there um, to help slow down his breathing a little bit, calm him down. It's supposed to bring him out of the seizure. A, a little slowly, yes. So... And it's this one was very new on the market, uh, very expensive. We're grateful our insurance is covering it, and he'll have that on Monday. Yeah, because of the... I almost said the vet. Oh, my gosh. The doctor said, you know, there's a good chance your insurance won't pay for this medicine. Luckily for us, they did. So... We don't get that until Monday. Um, so we had to totally move Will's bedroom to the first floor. So we have, we're struggling. We are exhausted. We have had, we're going to have to redo the whole house as far as like Paul had to move his room. So, and then we have to move Will from upstairs to where Paul's, where our TV room was. And then um, we have to finish cleaning up Will's room. And then Samuel is going to move and take over Will's old room to make it into his music room. Because Samuel's music room, is he's outgrowing it because of all of his musical stuff. Plus I give him a little bit more privacy. Yes. And then I'm going to move in the room my office is going to move into where he, the, yeah. where he was at. And Paul's going to move, take his office into the music room. And then we're going to be able to put back the kitchen table, the hutch, and one of my craft shelves. It's been a huge nightmare because, you know, when you have a house full of furniture, you only have so you can't do this all like if everything was in a moving van or in storage it has been a big time struggle plus trying to do it with four dogs running around and a cat well we are downsizing some furniture down yeah we have and purging and the one blessing with all this besides will doing fine right now is with the house we're doing kind of like a spring cleaning during the winter months. Right. With the dust, we're finding stuff. Oh, that's where that's been all this time. Yeah. So we're kind of doing that at the same time too. So <sighs> late nights, I mean, by 7.30 last night, we were exhausted. Yeah. I mean, we, we were, were literally. We fell into bed, literally. Yeah. But Will only had to spend one night sleeping in my room, which is, um, you know, I have my own little room. It's very, very small that is like my reading slash craft room and um i have like a seti in there so he slept there one night but by last night he was ready he wanted his bed he was practically begging us for his bed so it's like we really need to make this happen for him so paul and samuel did 
They said, if anything else, just get his bed in there and we can do the rest later. So that's what we did. We had his bed set up and put it where Samuel suggested. Will slept good with Paul and I going to bed before 8 o'clock. I ended up waking up at 1 o'clock. Went down, checked on Will to make sure he was okay. He was fine. And uh, stayed downstairs for a little bit. And uh, checked on him a second time. And uh, the second time he heard me and kind of opened his eyes. And I said, are you okay, sweetie? And he said, yes. I said, okay, honey, just go back to bed. Um, so, yeah. And the doctor, the neurologist told us, as far as restrictions, um, we need to listen to Will, he said, um, as far as like, uh, if he doesn't want to go to his day program, which currently right now, he goes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. He said, listen to him. If he wants to go, okay. If he wants to stay home, then we need to listen to him and keep him home. Restrictions. He can't drive. We never, honestly, we never expected Will to drive with him, his level of autism that he is. So that's, you know, um, he's not allowed to operate machinery. So... When it comes time to mow and lawn again, we got to check that out. But we got a whole year for that. And then um, he's not allowed on a ladder. So hopefully he doesn't have any reactions to this medicine. The doctor did state be on the lookout for a rash. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen. We did ask him if he wants to go to his RCC on Monday. He said yes, he wants to go. Um, if, if by chance Sunday night he doesn't feel good, not a problem. We'll keep him home. We have to listen to Will. Um, we're going to have to try to kind of restrict some of his things so he doesn't overwork himself since we're not really sure what is causing the seizures. Um... I mean, for instance, Paul went to the store today and I got up, Sammy was still sleeping. I went in there and Will, all by himself, had carried down a bookshelf, which was kind of heavy, um, his desk, his art desk, and his dresser. I, I almost flipped. I'm like, oh my Lord. I said, Will, you can't do that. I said, you need to, how do you feel? You need to take it easy sit there and relax so we're gonna have to you know try to get get him to kind of relax and kind of regulate him until we maybe can I don't know we don't know anything about seizures I don't know if we'll be able to figure out a type of pattern it's what's happening you know we don't know this is all new to us but yeah, because of what Will was saying to us about nightmares and because that's what he's referring to his seizures as, our nightmares and being tired. Paul and I got to talking and we both think it is possible that Will has had seizures that we weren't aware of. Because Will went out of his way one night just tell us he had nightmares and was super tired, didn't he? So, we told this to the doctor. Yeah, we told him. So, you know, that's right now. So, we're gonna, we're almost home. We're gonna relax a little bit, but I, we were hoping to watch a movie for our date night, but I told Paul, I'm, I'm, I know he's exhausted too, but I I don't think I'll be able to stay up for a movie because last night we were trying to watch a movie and I was falling asleep. Yeah, I, I'm still going to be up trying to get our kitchen in order. I can't barely walk around. It's a, our, it's a mess trying to to redo all of these rooms and re rearrange is what it is. We have to totally rearrange everything. So. And when you have rooms full of furniture, it's hard. It is really hard. I mean, we got nowhere to go. We have no empty rooms to try to, you know, shuffle this stuff around. Especially, too, since Will 
he was normally uh, one of the prime characters when we needed something moved. It was him, Samuel, or Paul. So I get who else it is. I know it's Paul and Samuel now. So yeah, but we're pulling into the driveway. So thank you for watching and listening, and um, we love your comments that you're always leaving behind. So we always appreciate that, and. Uh, we're hoping to put out more videos and more on a frequent basis now. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul. Bye, everyone. Where are these kids coming from? Oh, they're over there again. If you have enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest context. And check out the other great clips on Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul on the YouTube network. Thank you.